Okay, so there's something I wanted to show you, but uh, well, there's a lot of junk. Alright, there it is. Oh, pay no attention to that noise. There's the telescope that I want to tell you all about. Here it is. I get a lot of questions about this red and blue telescope that shows up in a lot of my videos, and I thought today I would share the story behind this. Well, it starts long ago. In the mid-1990s, I was in college, and I wandered into the Whetstone Library in Columbus, Ohio, and I found this book, Build Your Own Telescope by Richard Berry. Now, it's been 30 years. I can't even imagine how big the late fee is for this book. Just kidding. This is my own personal copy. I bought it. I paid for it. But anyways, by Richard Berry, you've heard me talk about him in other videos. He is the most prolific writer in astronomy. He was the editor for Astronomy Magazine. He created the Telescope Making Magazine series, which I consider one of my most useful research resources. Uh, he has written astronomy software, and he's written lots of books. But the book that is most important to me is this one, because it started phase two of my love of astronomy. Phase one was pretty short. In the early 1980s, I had a wobbly refractor telescope from J.C. Penney. It was a real hobby killer, and I eventually got rid of it. And my interest in astronomy went dormant for about 10 years. And that was until I stumbled upon this book. And I have to say, it really caught my attention because the, the telescopes in here that you can build are very substantial, and they're something that anybody can do if you have a few tools. And the one that really caught my attention is the 6-inch F8 Dobsonian. Uh, you can make it out of plywood. It has flat sides. It's pretty easy to build. And so I'd like to take you on a tour of this telescope today and tell you all the really cool features about this. Uh, it Some of the parts harken back to older technology. Uh, some of you may not be familiar with it if you're really young, but I think you might find it pretty interesting. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is remove the dust cap. Like any good Dobsonian, the top comes off. Let's take a look at the base first. Of all the designs in the book, this one really caught my attention because of its simplicity. Most of the joints are right angles, and the box itself has flat sides, so it can be built on almost any table or even on the ground. As far as materials go, this one's pretty cool because it only requires two half sheets of plywood. One sheet is three quarters of an inch thick, and that goes into building the mount here. The other one is a half inch thick, and that one goes into building the actual telescope box. Now let's take a look at this. I do add handles to all of my Dobsonians because it sure does make moving them around a lot easier. This one is held together mainly by drywall screws, and the only really complicated cut is this nice circular cut up here. Uh, I have Teflon tabs up here that the telescope box trunnions sit on, and I have dowel rods here that are actually mounted at an angle, and that makes the telescope self-centering, so it doesn't wander from side to side as I use it. You may notice this turns very, very smoothly, and that's because I'm using Teflon pads on a Formica surface. Now, one of the neat things about this are these circular pieces right here. Those are made from sink cutouts. Now, if you've never heard of that before, uh, it comes from basically the world of cabinet making. When they go to put a sink in, they have to cut a big square hole, and that square hole typically will have Formica uh, covering on it, which is a common countertop material, and it turns out it works pretty well with sliding on Teflon. Now, if you contact the cabinet making company and you say, hey, do you have any sink cutouts that I can either buy or even have? Sometimes they'll just give them to you. Well, there you go. You have some ready-made materials to put into your base. The legs themselves are just cut out of 2x4. I just cut some fancy curves in it, but this is actually all described in the book itself. So let me show you the telescope now. So here we are at the front end of the telescope. It looks very different now than it did in the mid-1990s. It didn't have a fancy focuser, and it didn't have a red dot finder, because I don't think these actually existed in the mid-1990s. In fact, when I first built this, uh, I was just a college student, didn't have any money, so the way that I aimed it was I just used this corner, believe it or not, I would uh, just set my eye at the back on the corner, and I would try to aim the corner at whatever object I was looking at in the sky. I eventually replaced it with a couple of eye hooks, and then once these red dot finders became more common, I went ahead and replaced it. It's one of the best investments you can do. Uh, they're like 20, 25 bucks. Now, as far as the focuser goes, it was extremely simple. 
In fact, originally there was a block of two by four with a piece of PVC that was big enough for an eyepiece to go in. And this would just literally, I would wiggle it and slide it into the block and out of the block. I'm embarrassed to say that that was the way that I had this set up for many, many years, but I think around four or five years ago, I updated it to this used rack and pinion focuser. This also takes inch and a quarter eyepieces. Since we're at the front, one of the more interesting things is the secondary mirror. And right here is the mount. This is just a threaded rod that goes down to a wooden block with an angle and I have the mirror glued to it. Let me show you a close up on that. So on the left is the focuser tube, but right there in the middle is the secondary holder. That's literally just a piece of wood that I hand cut with a coping saw and there's a threaded rod that comes in from the top. And as you can imagine, this is actually quite complicated to collimate because it involves bending that rod and trying to get everything lined up. But for now, it is actually lined up quite well. The telescope trunnion supports themselves are made from old super eight millimeter movie film containers or cans as they were often called. And for you youngsters out there, movies used to come on long strips of film that were wound up on a reel, and those reels would be stored in these protective cans. Uh, this telescope was built in kind of a weird time. Up until about, I guess, the 1980s, these protective canisters were made out of metal. You may be more familiar with that look. But, you know, in the 1990s and beyond, they were pretty much replaced by these plastic ones. And I have to say, this has actually worked very well for its purpose. It's lasted 30 years, and I really don't have any reason to replace these. So this is the back end of the telescope. This is the mirror cell where the mirror is held firmly in place. And you can see the three collimation bolts that I have here. It just has two screws on each side that hold the block in. I'm going to take this out and show it to you. Now, before I do that, I have to explain this strap. Uh, this has two purposes, actually. I hang weights from this if I need any kind of counterbalance on this telescope, but it also allows me to easily pull the mirror cell out. It's a little bit hard to get because there's nothing really to grab. So let me go ahead and take these screws out. Again, there are two screws on each side of the telescope box. The mirror cell is a pretty tight fit, so in addition to pulling on that handle, I usually have to use a small screwdriver to carefully pry it out of the telescope box. And there it is. Let's take a closer look. If you're enjoying this video, please push that like button. I'm stuck in this telescope. All right, let's get rid of that dust. Look at that. Still looks pretty good. This mirror is 30 years old and it still looks fantastic. This mirror cell is pretty neat. These are little half cylinders and it's held in with silicone glue that is um, still good after 30 years. I'm really surprised at this. As you can see, we have two blocks of wood and these are the collimation screws and this one just pulls it tight, this one in the middle. Uh, I did put this center marker on myself. I bought a kit online to put that on because the mirror itself did not have one when I bought it back in the 1990s. But this is really in surprisingly good shape. It doesn't need any consideration for recoding. So I'll go ahead and put this back in. So now you know the story behind my first real telescope. If you've ever gotten the hankering to build your own telescope, this is a very good design to start with. It's pretty straightforward and all the instructions are right here in this book. Now, if you wanna see one of the strangest telescope restorations I've ever had to do that required some very out of the box thinking, well, click on this video right over here. I think you might enjoy that. But until next time, thank you for watching and clear skies, everybody.